let's have a look at pressure. In everyday life, pressure has a different meaning to pressure in physics. Imagine an area, one meter squared, so one meter by one meter, and then I want you to imagine an apple. And picture an apple in your hand. Think of the weight of that apple. The weight is a force of gravity from the apple acting down on your hand. We don't measure weight in grams or kilograms. In physics, we measure weight using a unit called newtons. We give it the symbol capital N. And the weight of an apple is about one newton. Remember that from the famous scientist Isaac Newton. Imagine that newton force spread across a meter squared area. That would be a pressure of one newton per meter squared, one newton acting on a meter squared area. So we can give the equation pressure in newtons per meter squared is equal to force in newtons divided by area in meter squared, and that's the equation for pressure in physics. And you can visualize this looking at some different examples of pressure. So imagine walking along a beach wearing your shoes, and your shoes dig into the sand, and you can see your footprints, and that comes about from the pressure under your shoes, and that's from the person's weight acting on that area. So my weight would be a thousand newtons, because I'm quite a heavy lump. You imagine my weight acting on the area under my shoes, that's what presses on the sand. Now, if you dare, imagine me walking in high heels across the sand, and the shoes would dig in further. Why? Well, you've still got um, a big weight, a thousand newtons, but it's acting now on a very small area, which results in a big pressure, or a massive pressure if it was me. In contrast, something like a snowshoe is designed to spread out your weight, to spread the force across a bigger area, and therefore to reduce the pressure. So think of that big area under a snowshoe, for example, and that would enable you to work, walk across a surface of snow. But pressure doesn't just occur between solids when one object rests on another. Pressure also occurs in liquids and in gases. But why? Well, the equation for pressure is exactly the same. In liquids and gases, pressure is force in newtons divided by area in meters squared. So there needs to be a force and an area for this pressure to be exerted. The force comes about because the particles in liquids and gases are constantly flying around. They've got lots of energy and they move fast. And when they bump into surfaces, they bounce off and they push. They exert a force on the surface. An area is just whatever surface of an object is exposed to the liquid or gas. It could be the inside surface of a con container, or it could be the outside surface of an object which is um, submerged in the liquid or gas. So imagine a can, for example, and the can is filled with gas. And remember that we can see those particles inside the, the, the can. We can't visualize them. They're too small to actually see. But they're, they're moving around really quickly and smashing into the inside surfaces of the container. And whenever they bump into that surface, they exert a push or a force which pushes outwards. Remember, you've now got an area, the inside surface of the can, and a force, which means we've got pressure acting outwards. But it doesn't stop there. There's also pressure acting inward on the can, the atmospheric pressure, because the can is surrounded by air, and the air molecules bump into the can from the outside. Finally, an interesting fact for you. Atmospheric pressure is huge. One ATM, one atmospheric pressure, is 101,000 newtons per meter squared. If you want to visualize that, remember that a big lump like me has a weight of around 1,000 newtons. So 100,000 newtons is like 100 of me stood on an area of a single meter squared. That's a massive pressure.